Welcome to part four of Why Teach Vocabulary with Jane Diener, science consultant, and David Evans, a social studies consultant. Last webcast, we looked at students using the Frere model as a means to develop vocabulary by restating descriptions in their own words and constructing symbolic representation. This webcast, we will focus on step four in Marzano's five-step process, which considers that it is important to engage students periodically in activities that support their vocabulary development. We are going to describe a variety of engaging strategies that you can use in your classroom. The first few strategies incorporate the smart board and utilize the lesson activity toolkit tools found within the gallery of smart notebook software. The first activity is called the vortex. Students look at two opposing definitions and then select criteria and drag them to the correct vortex. If the student correctly identifies the criteria, the vortex sucks it in. Otherwise, the vortex spits it out. It really sucks it in, Jane? Like it... it does. Let's just take a look here. Here we have oxidation and reduction, two chemistry terms. I'm more of a physics guy, but I'll, uh, I'll try to work my way through this. Okay, so in this case, uh, reduction is when an atom or an ion gains electrons, which are negatively charged particles. So if I was looking at the criteria here, and I had loss of electrons, where might I put that? Hmm, I think in reduction. Let's try that. Oh, David, it spit it out. Oh, oh I, went I knew it. I was listening to you. Right. I know that doesn't happen often, but I wanted to see. Uh, it really see, there it is. It out. Oh. So loss of electrons is yeah. oxidation. It, it gets uh, So this is a great activity. You, you've used this in your classroom, obviously, and uh, this, are the students very engaged with this? or They are engaged, and the teacher can click edit, and if they click edit, you'll be able to add more criteria. I'm just showing you two. Hmm. This next activity is called image match. Students need to understand the symbolic representation of the definition. Then, quite simply, the students match the image to the definition. So we'll just do one here, Jane. Um, so if you, can, you see these, these symbolic representations here, the images, what I'd like you to do is match socialism to the image that you think best represents socialism. Well, I, do, I'm, I don't know much about social studies, David, but I'm thinking socialism has something to do with everybody looking after each other. So the safety net, to me, represents socialism. Outstanding. Thank you. And the other ones I'm just going to put somewhere. Ooh. And then, what if I wanted to know if I was right? What would I do? Well, I think you would just click that check button in the okay, top left. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that, yeah. Oh, okay. I got two yeah. wrong. That's probably why you and, said ooh. And with this strategy, Jane, could you have more than three um, images? Like, uh, is there a limit? Well, there um, is. And again, if you click edit, very simple to use. You can see your given choices. You can increase your number of, of uh, images that you can offer to students. Excellent. Well, our next one is called an anagram. And an anagram is particularly fun for students. Words are inputted by the teacher in advance with either text or image clues. Then the student considers the correct term and drags the letters into the correct sequence. Spell it helps with spelling too. So for example, if I click start here, there is a scrabbled word, mm -hmm. David, and you don't know where to start, so you click clue. And you'll notice clue can either be a visual or it can be text as well. So which one would this be, David? What do you well, think? Well, I, I think just looking at it, it it's most likely water. Um, All right, and, and, so and so we move the letters into their correct placement. Students are up at the board, and when you get it correct, it'll give you the feedback. Great. And you can move to the next one. And the last one is called Keyword Match, and it is a text matching game where students drag the word to the correct description. So we'll just do one here, Jane, um, and I'll just get you to look at, say, sales tax, because okay. we, we love this one, of course. And where do you think this one would go? I think that's a tax paid at the time of buying a product or a service. You are correct. Let's check it. I yeah, right. Okay. And again, is there a limit here to, uh, to the number of words or? Again, you can click edit, and it gives you options. And you could have the students uh, come up and do this as well, which I think is powerful. Okay, to conclude, I hope you've enjoyed this webcast on practical activities to support you with vocabulary development. We know that you can use these activities tomorrow or even today, and our next webcast will continue to provide activities that will support vocabulary development. Thanks. Have a great day, guys.